Hello there, Ray here, and I'm joined by Lord Chaotic Wolf, a fellow ProTech member. Hello. And today, guys, we got something real special. We're going to show you how you can trade infinite amount of times per day with villagers. This is the best way to trade with villagers as well as wandering traders. And after this video, guys, you will actually enjoy 1.14 villager trading. And here is a simple setup. And with the setup, you're able to trade the villagers infinite amount of times without them ever locking up. This allows you to easily get tons of different types of enchanted books, as well as get awesome trades such as full diamond for only one emerald each. The way that works is that we have villager kind of held in place, and what we'll do is we will trade with the villager, and then as we have the GUI open, we'll send him over into the nether dimension, and after he's over there, we'll start trading with him. And all the trades that we do with him here won't affect his actual locking up. So let's go through the process of it working. Here we got the villager, and for the villagers to have trades, they need to have a workstation nearby. So this guy chose this lectern, which makes him a librarian. Librarians are one of the coolest, since they can sell you all the different types of enchanted books. And if you're curious about all the new trades in 1.14, I did do a separate video going over all that. And there are some really cool trades in 1.14, but with this system, we can go ahead and trade with them indefinitely. So normally when you trade them, you just click this, and then once you have bought all the stock that they have, they won't be able to refresh their trades unless they go to their workstation and refresh them and only do that twice per day. But with this system that we made, you can trade the villagers infinitely. You just close this trap door and let the water make them push them through. But you notice that he's in a cobweb and we'll click on him and you can actually watch him up here. And once he gets teleported away into the nether, you can go ahead and start doing your trades. So you can see that he is selling books. So you can buy your books all you want. And let's just go ahead and just show you that we can lock him and that he will still be able to be unlocked. So he's currently locked right now. And typically then you'd have to wait half a day for him to reset his trades again. So now you can go ahead and leave that screen and close this. And then the villager will actually come back out of the portal after a short delay. You want to make sure you do your trading within 15 seconds. So what's going on is we are sending the villager over into the nether and I can show you guys what's happening over there. Let's go ahead and send him back. And then once it goes over here, the player actually doesn't go over into this side. He just stays on this side. And what we have is the villager comes out of the portal and we break the portal and then we wait the 15 seconds which he needs for him to cool down before he can go into the portal again. And then we'll light the portal and then he'll be teleported back again. It's actually a really simple setup here. So you can see that now that he's back again, his trades are all refreshed, and technically to the villager, he never thought we actually traded him since he was in a different dimension. So by trading him this way, we actually did not gain any XP's up here, even though it looked like we did. Now one thing you may notice is that we have a lectern here, and that's something we had to change with our old design. Now the villagers will actually lose their trades when they're no longer near their workstation, and you can actually take advantage of this. So if you really wanted to, you can actually remove his workstation and keep getting him to turn back into a default villager. So if you have a villager that you don't like his trades, you can actually remove his workstation and then he will actually lose his profession. You can see there I just sped up time and now he lost his profession. Now he's a normal guy. We give a new workstation and you can see now he got some different trades. And you can keep doing this until you get a trade that you like just by removing his workstation and putting it back again. After doing a lot of testing with Grandma Mommy, we discovered that the villagers will change their trades between the times of 2000 and 9000. So we set it to 2100 and if we remove this guy's workstation, he will immediately lose his trade. And if we replace it, he will quickly regain his trade. And if you guys were watching the stream, we discovered this is a really cool way to be able to switch out the trades to get new ones. So we can kind of refresh them. So you can see what we got currently right now. And if we remove it and we put down another workstation for him, you can see now we have a different trade. We actually got efficiency forward just like that. So this is an extremely fast way to go ahead and get those trades that you're looking for. If you're looking for like a mending or efficiency five, you can easily do this. But you only have between those two time periods. You can get some of the best book trades by doing this. Now if you want to make sure that he doesn't lose his trades when going through portal, all you have to do is advance him into the next level. Okay, so I went ahead and filled up his whole XP bar here, and now he's a novice, and as soon as you leave the trade, he will refresh with the little regen bubbles. This actually regenerates him as well if he took any damage. Now if you go ahead and right-click him, you can see that he is now an apprentice. Now when he goes through portals, you don't have to worry about him losing any of his trades. Now at this point, you can go ahead and continue trading him using this system here. And you don't have to worry about him losing any of his trades from now on. Or you can go ahead and make sure that there is a workstation on both sides. And that way they will also not lose their trades. So even though we don't have a workstation here, you can see that this guy still has the same old trades. Now you can stack this mechanic on top of the Hero of the Village effect. You can get this after completing a raid and you get up to level 5 in survival. 
and this will reduce the prices of the villagers. So you can see that he discounted his price from 24 paper down to 11. And the silk touch book, which used to be 14, is only going to cost you 7 now. Now if you haven't seen my raid farm, where I show how OP you can use this hero of the village effect, definitely check it out because it's really useful to actually get that effect. There's a really cool trick that I showed quite a while ago, actually one of my old videos, where the villagers will actually constantly lower their prices. It's actually kind of considered a glitch and they try to partly fix it, but it's not completely fixed. But what you can do is you can have the villager, as soon as he thinks he's giving you a discount, you can have that discount multiplied. So you can do this with like the hero of the village effect, or you can do this just by getting him to like you, and therefore he will discount his prices. So easy way to get him to like you is just by purchasing stuff from him. So when he updated his level of librarian, so now he's apprentice, you can see he also updated his trades. Even though it's still locked, it's not going to refresh. You can see now we have a discount. So now if we just go ahead and we go underneath, and we open this up. So now he is in the water partially because he's trying to swim in it. And if we keep right clicking him, we can see we can keep reducing his prices down. And pretty soon we're going to have the mending for one emerald. Although we've been playing with this trick for the last three or four months, uh, Doc M recently did a video kind of explaining how to do this. So check out his video if you have any trouble. Now you can also do this with the hero of the village effect. It's a little bit harder to get the village effect, but it's a little bit easier to get the pricing down lower. So let me show you that. So you can see his prices right now. He is currently selling this one for 18. And if we get that hero of the village effect, which you get after completing a raid, it doesn't matter what level it is. So this is level one. If you go ahead and click him, you see that he's reduced his prices. And then if we let him kind of try to go into this water over here, and then once he's in water, if we continue clicking him, you can see we can get the prices down all the way down to one. And the only main difference between this and the other one is you can do this one without having to open up the trades. And you can also discount him quicker, so it's less clicks to get down to the very bottom. We are limited by the time that the hero of the village effect lasts, which is about two Minecraft days. So if it's like the emeralds, then he'll only charge you like one emerald instead of that amount. And if he's like buying a product, then he'll only ask for like one of those products and he'll give you that same amount. So it only changes this side of the trade. Now this is a known glitch and there is a bug report on it. And it's most likely they will fix this. As I mentioned this in the previous video, it was pretty much fixed the next version. So using all these tricks, let's see how fast we can get a full inventory, the top part here, full of perfect mending books. So first off, we're going to go ahead and keep switching out his trades until we get a mending book. Now kind of an easy way to see if he even has a book to offer if he just holds some emeralds in your hand. So now you got to see he has a book so we can trade him. That kind of saves us more steps of having to click into him and click out. There we have it guys, we got mending, and we did this in not even one day session. Let's see what time it is. It is 8,000, so we're getting really close to the 9,000 mark where they wouldn't be able to switch trades up. So the next step is to go ahead and to get the trade all the way down to only one emerald. So we're gonna use that trick, and make sure you have your lectern on the other side of the portal as well. Now we just put our cobweb in place. Now we're gonna use a trick where we're gonna have the water flowing underneath of him and slowly push him into the portal, and he's also gonna be in the water so we can reduce his prices down so let's go ahead and get ready, open this up, and we'll click on him, and we'll just keep reclicking on him. You can see the price that just keeps getting reduced and reduced, and now it is set to 1. Okay, so now we are ready to do the trading. I have a little switch here, which just puts a gate over here, and it's activated by this lever here, just to prevent him from pathfinding into the portal when we're not ready for him. We got one stack of emeralds and one stack of books, and we are ready. Let's go ahead and release this guy. He's slowly going over. And as soon as he gets teleported, you will be able to uh, trade with him. So it's a little bit of lag when it's sent him over to another. I have some commands telling me what's going on over there. Let's go ahead and start trading with him. So we just got six books out of him, and let's get him to come back again. Okay, he came back again. And let's close that again so he can walk over here into the cobweb. Amazing, look at that guys. And over here we have some indicators which tell us when we're ready to trade with him again. It just will count up 15 seconds and that will tell us that he's ready to go back into the portal and actually teleport once he touches it. Otherwise, he'll just get stuck in the portal. So that lamp switch is over there now. Let's go ahead and release him and click on him again and get his prices all the way down. Okay, he's coming back again. Perfect. You can see he has the mending for one and the lamp just turned off. Let's release him again. And we're gonna have to re-trade with him really fast to get it back down to one again. When you leave it like that, then it will go back up to the total amount. But then you can see if we can go ahead and do some more trading with him. We just got six more books. And now we can close this and he's gonna come back again. And he's teleported. Let's go ahead and purchase all those. Oh my goodness, guys. <laughs> we did it. 
we got a whole inventory full of many books just like that. And we only, we didn't even use half a stack of emeralds or books. That is insane. That is how overpowered this is. This is by far the best method for trading villagers of 1.14. This means with the armorer, which is this guy here who uses the blast furnace for his workstation, you can get his prices by keep right clicking him all the way down to one emerald. So you can get a full set of diamond with different types of enchantments on it for one emerald each. So that's a total of having 24 different diamonds given to you for the price of just four emeralds. And you can also get all the different types of diamond tools as well as diamond weapons using the same trick for one emerald each. Plus they also have pretty good enchantments on them to start with, which you can always remove if you don't like them with a grindstone. Now this trick also works with the wandering traders, so you get tons of trades before they despawn. Wandering traders have a set amount of trades and they don't get new trades, but also when you use up their trades, what will happen is they'll lock and this will be permanent so they never refresh this. And when wandering traders were introduced, we tried to find a way so we could do more trading with them before they would completely lock up. And during our streams, we came about a method that worked where we pushed a wandering trader into an end portal while someone else was trading with them with the screen open and they were able to continue trading afterwards and they didn't actually lock any of their trades. And two months ago on stream, we were able to figure out a way to make it consistent as well as we also automated the whole system. But today we're going to go ahead and I'll show you the updated version, which we just updated because they changed some stuff to do with villagers. So our old machine didn't work. So the first thing you want to do is get a wandering trader. They'll naturally spawn around the player and they will end up despawning after about 45 minutes. So you do want to make sure you storm over another dimension and you can make an automated farm like I showed with our cat farm where wandering traders will actually spawn on the platform and then they will go into the nether portal. And once in another dimension, you don't have to worry about them despawning. Then what you do is you will build up this device and put the wandering trader in here. And then all you have to do is come over here and flick this trap door and then right click on him. And you can see how the water is pushing him over into this nether portal. A little bit of delay and then he'll get teleported over into the nether dimension. And now you can go through and do all the trading that he has to offer here. Now he will still lock up, but he'll only lock up for this instance here. As soon as you click on him again, it'll be refreshed. So you can go ahead and you can do all these trades. So I went ahead and used up all these trades. Now what you do is just open that trap door up again so the water doesn't flow in and you can head over into the nether dimension. And then you just hop out this portal and go down here and the wandering trader is right over here in the nether dimension. He thinks it's night out so then he goes ahead and goes invisible. He drinks his invisibility potion. But you can see when I right click him, all his trades are here and none of them are locked. So you can go ahead and trade with him all over again. And then we have an automated system over here, which will put him back into the nether portal. So he's currently right over there. So you can just stand this pressure plate and click on him. And then what he'll do is he'll run past you and go into the nether portal. And then you can begin trading with him again. So now you can do the trades all over again. And then once you're done, you can see he's no longer here. You just go back up into this nether portal and you can repeat the process from the overworld side again. And you can see he's over here and his trades are all still unlocked. Wanderer traders actually have a wide range of different trades and I did do a whole video explaining their trades and talked in more depth about why some trades I thought were better than others. But especially like on a skyblock server or just starting out, they have a wide variety of different things. They're kind of specific to different biomes they normally can't get easily from like one area. Uh, some of their cooler things that they sell is like the Nautilus shell, as well as like giving all the different types of saplings so you don't have to travel out really far. They also sell tropical fish in a bucket so you can get a wide variety of different types of tropical fish. And they do sell coral blocks, which are non-renewables. So through the wandering traders, you can get more of those. And a lot of other very unique stuff. So it's really cool to be able to constantly be able to trade with them. Now the wandering traders do have something called despawn delay and this is a time before they will despawn and typically when they spawn in it is 45 minutes but when you do trading with them so let's say if you trade this guy every time you send him over into the other dimension he will have to wait 15 seconds before being able to go back through another portal. So over time you're slowly going to cut away on his despawn timer and eventually he will be able to despawn. So with the system with the wandering trainers, over time you will eventually have the guy despawn so it's not infinite, but with villagers it is. So let me explain these devices. So let's first start with the villager one here. The villager is sitting on top of a cobble wall and this allows him to stand in three different blocks. So if we press F3 and B, you can see that his top is up here in this tripwire. His middle section here is a cobweb and his feet are down here where we can have the water go over them. This allows us to have multiple devices kind of running off of a smaller area. So this tripwire at the top goes over to this piston. And this piston here is a sticky piston, which will drop a block over here 
when the villager comes into the cobweb, and this will move all the items over onto this side, and then they will get stuck here. And this is what we're using for the timer. Now when the villager leaves, then the items will move to the other side, and then the lights will switch. And we use this to determine when the villager's cooldown timer for the nether portal is over, so we can send them back again. On the back side here, we also have a comparator which is going around and dropping items into the nether portal, because the villager will go over into the nether, and then the chunks will unload after 15 seconds. And this isn't enough time for the villager to be sent back again without the player going over there. So what we do is we throw an item into the nether, and this loads chunks over there. Now I do do a separate video explaining how that works, but that will actually make an entity process of chunks so the villager gets processed, and he will be sent back again. We also have this lever here, it just goes to that gate, which allows us to kind of hold the villager in place until we're ready to release him. And we also have this water log trap door, which allows the water to flow over and push the villager in. Now the reason why we're using cobwebs and water to push the villager in and not pistons, because pistons are unstable on servers. When you try to do this on servers, it's completely dependent on your client to server connection. So if you're on a server you don't have a very good connection to, you're not gonna have a very good job at pulling this trick off without having the villager move very slowly into another portal. If you use something like pistons or any other method where he moves quickly into another portal, it's very unlikely that it will consistently work. And we did a lot of testing on stream, seeing the difference of this device from multiplayer to single player. Now we have the lectern kind of close to the villager, that way he can switch professions. If you get too far away, he won't be able to use that lectern. Now you can use whatever type of workstation you want to. If you want to go ahead and try to get someone that's a blacksmith, you can use their related table. It really depends on what type of trade you want to get. Now also you see this corner, we have a gate here which is open. Now mobs try to path find through the corner of blocks. So just because there is a block here and a block here, the villager will actually try to path find through this corner as long as there's no blocks here or over there. This is actually a very useful quirk, so we actually open this up so the villager thinks he can walk here, thinks he can walk on top of this, and eventually he can walk on top of all this over here. And of course if he build this on a flat plane, then he thinks he can walk everywhere around him. And we use this actually to make him walk over here into this corner. Now he's already trying to kind of walk towards his workstation, but this actually makes it a little bit better. And sometimes the villager does look like he's trying to clip through this trapdoor here. But he won't be able to escape because we got that cobble wall underneath over here, which is keeping him up high, and then we also have a trapdoor over here. So he can't normally jump over this and get out. Now what happens when you send the villager over into nether, let's go ahead and do that. You'll go over here and let's go into our portal which is linked up here. This one takes us to the maintenance portal. So we come out that one and the villager comes out the one down below. You can see what happens is that the villager when he comes through he's going to step on the pressure plates and go over here. It's going to drop lava, break the portal. And then what it also does is it goes around over here and goes to a clock which will wait 15 seconds and then it will just ignite the portal here with some flint and steel and this will just cause them to teleport once again. And you do need to have this lectern over here if you want to make sure he keeps his trades when he comes into this dimension. Because during those periods where he's able to switch trades he will lose it. But just to be safe you should go ahead and trade up until at least he's apprentice. That way you don't have to worry about him losing his trades. Now this setup is really simple. As you see we just got some simple redstone here and a simple clock and that's really all there is to it. Now there is a chance that the autosave will occur which is where the game will kind of unload all the chunks on the server that don't need to be loaded and in which case the villager will kind of get stuck over here and it won't send it back again. And you'll find the villager usually just kind of standing on this pressure plate but the portal won't break. So you can just come back over here and just break the redstone in place again and then it will start up again. By having one portal low, one portal high, when the player goes into this one, he will always be sent to the corresponding high portal rather than the low one and get stuck down here with the villager. And when you're not trading with the villager, you can go ahead and just flick that switch and put that gate in to him. And even though the gate is partly inside of him, therefore he can actually walk through it, he won't walk over into the nether portal. And that way he's not constantly going in and out of the nether portal. You can do the same thing with gateway portals or like end portals. With gate portal it's faster because they don't have to cool down from it. The gate portal itself has a one second cooldown, but they themselves don't have any cooldown. Now the wandering trader device is a little bit different. And this is initially how we actually had the villager one too, but then they kind of changed the way that villagers work. And if you guys would like to be right there as we discover these new things and be the first one to see it, be sure to join our Twitch streams. And we do new snapshot testings on Wednesdays and Fridays with the viewers. You guys can take part in all these discoveries. So with the wandering trader, it's a little bit different. We have pretty much the same setup on this side, except you notice that we don't have a device that is shooting items over onto the other side. That's because we actually trade with them on both sides. Now wandering traders have very similar AI to villagers, but they kind of change the villager AI so they act very differently. So wandering traders are still scared of zombie pigmen, where villagers are no longer scared of them. 
So this one you do the exact same thing. You open it up and you would trade with them. And once you're done trading, you just go up into this another portal, which is linked with the one that is above. And then from here, we got is a little bit different device because we don't have water to work with, which is much easier. But what we have is kind of a runway area here. And the Wandering Trader will come out of this portal and he'll be scared of a zombie pigman, which he sees through this gap over here. And then he will run across this soul sand run over here over top of this pressure plate and then that will open up this trap door and then he'll run back here and that will close the gate on him and then he'll be stuck back here. Once they go to another dimension they do drink invisibility potions. It's a little bit hard to see him but you can see his particles there. And what we have is a pigment over here and then what he does is he'll stay there until you're ready to stand on this pressure plate. As soon as you stand on this it will release this one allowing him to walk back and forth and we'll open this one so he'll see that guy and he'll get scared and run back into the portal. And what we have is some wiring which just detects when he gets over there and then it will count to 15 seconds off and then it'll just say hey if there's a player standing on here and a, and a wandering villager over here and then it'll open up the gate and then he'll run over there only after the 15 seconds are over. So when you release him, he's kind of going to run past you and you just have to uh, click on him. And this way you're able to trade in both dimensions. So you only have that 15 seconds you lose each time if done properly. Also notice when we trade, the XP's come out of the nether portal. So that's kind of where the game thinks he was last at. And then the modern trader will be sent back to this side, be scared by the pigment and will end up over here. And we don't have cobwebs because it's pretty consistent without the cobwebs with the wandering trader. But if you are having trouble, you can always put in a cobweb similar to the other design. And then you can go ahead and just repeat the process. They do well remember to name tag the pigmen, otherwise they will despawn. Or you can also just give them something to hold. So if they like pick up some armor, then they also won't despawn. Lovely Cora blocks. Now during the nighttime in the overworld, he will also drink the invisibility potion. You can see the little particles there and he's just sitting right here. You can still click on him and do the trades. We put the world download to this world down in the description so you can build it up in your very own survival worlds or recommend it to someone else. And it has both the wandering trader system over here and then if you just teleport with this command, you end up here at the villager one. There's also some commands so you can switch out different types of villagers and test them out. And we've been working on this for the last couple months in making a machine to automate this process. And if you guys would like to be there right as we discover these new things, be sure to come by and check out our snapshot testing streams every Wednesday and Friday. And turn on your notifications so you can get informed of all the cool stuff that we discover before we even make videos about it. The best way to do 1.14 villager trading. Let us know what you guys think about this down in the comments. Parts of this most likely will change in the future as it's probably considered a glitch, but we'd love to hear what you guys think about it. And now that you guys have a better understanding, you can enjoy the next level of trading. We really enjoy building this as well as designing this with the viewers during the stream. And we put a lot of time into trying to perfect it. So if you guys did enjoy this, be sure to give it a like and be sure to share this with everyone you know, as this is the best method for trading with villagers of 1.14. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.